us in the studio. Will, um, well, first of all, your reaction to this, uh, to this attack and the potential questions around the security at the event? OK, so two things, really. Firstly, uh, I'm not surprised because the fatwa against Salman Rushdie was still very much alive and this was still a, a clear and present danger. Uh, secondly, obviously, it's a horrific attack. Uh, he suffered some alleged 10 uh, wounds, which were right across his body, including, obviously, the puncture of his right eye. Uh, three or four of those wounds were certainly to his neck, at the front of his neck. So the fact that he's now talking, I think, is very promising. And it shows what an excellent job the medics are currently mm -hmm. doing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And also shows, I don't know, the, the real stamina of the individual. I mean, because I was saying yesterday, he's 75. Is yeah. he going to be able to withstand an attack like that? How would anyone? But um, he's clearly, uh, you know, he's, he's awake, he's talking, he's yeah. determined. No, he? you're absolutely right. I mean, the trauma of an attack like that can be enough for someone of frail disposition, which obviously Salman Rushdie isn't, which is good mm. to hear, uh, could be enough to certainly put one into cardiac arrest, for example. You know, I'm not a medic, I've got some basic medic training, but certainly having been around these kinds of uh, mm. events, I know that uh, he's obviously a very resilient and very robust man. Yeah. Now, for, for many, many years, he's always been guarded. Yeah. Uh, I, I, you can only, you can barely imagine yeah. the, the sort of way his life has been completely altered by writing the satanic verses and then having that fatwa issued. Um, but it clearly, uh, he's relaxed over the last couple of years. He attended this literary event, which was very much about the freedom of speech. Yes. Um, and uh, he appears not to have been guarded uh, at all. Well, not effectively, Anne. Mm -hmm. um, the venue itself, from the research that I've done, allegedly didn't have any, they actually rejected uh, any search procedures, which is unheard of in these current times. Mm. So there was no uh, security wanding, there was no bank searching, and although that isn't necessarily entirely robust, there are lots of things you can do. Mm. Uh, the fact that they didn't even introduce what would be very basic measures these days uh, shows serious lacking on the part of the host. But if you go when you've got Salman Rushdie speaking. Well, exactly. Well, yeah. I mean, and the yeah. fact that the actual fatwa, you know, it, although the Iranian uh, government tried, and the, and the Toller, the, the Khomeini tried to obviously withdraw itself or distance itself back in 1998. Um, back in 2017, the Khomeini's official website actually said the fatwa was still alive and well. And there was oh. even another mention on Twitter in February of this year that that fatwa was still... And there was still a bounty. Protected. Yes, still a bounty of $2 million. Um, so when I, I've looked after a number of people who have been under threat, uh, the biggest challenge you always have is when do you step down that security? Mm. But you have to rely, if you're someone like Salman Rushdie who's speaking at a public event, and I've protected a lot of principals at public events, uh, about the security at that venue needs to be commensurate to the type of risk that you've got. And although there was the presence of a state trooper and a sheriff, which the venue are stating were their, uh, if you like, gesture towards security, um, the individual was about 75 feet away from the stage. Mm. And that short distance, and I've looked at, uh, I, I've protected people at venues where there have been attempts to try and storm the stage or mm. try to attack the principal, none of which have been successful because of sensible planning. And this individual managed to get on stage and stab him 10 times before yeah. that state trooper got involved. And I'm afraid to say this, unless those state troopers or those police are, protect, are, are trained in personal protection, that is not sufficient. Right. Simply being a state trooper, having a gun yeah. and being in the room is not enough. No, certainly not. And Personal you said 75, is a skill. And you said 75 feet is a short distance, because 75 feet to no, me... That's a long sounds... distance. It's a long distance. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 A proper so, guard would yeah. have been able to see the problem coming. It's about positioning. So any kind of security should be positioned in such a way that an individual attempting to storm the stage or attack uh, the person that's on stage can be intercepted before they get there. And it would say to me, not having been there, I can only speculate that those state troopers were just not in the right positions. Mm. It's odd, isn't it, then, that Salman Rushdie, who uh, has had to do this for so many years, it's odd that, in a way that he felt that he could still go ahead without specialist guards. But he obviously did. I mean, maybe at 75, he thought... The t in fact, he's been recorded as saying, I can relax back a bit now. He actually mm. said that. Well, you know, I can't, I can't blame him. And again, I've had principals who've had the same. You know, after a long period of having to hide and be cautious and, and be paranoid about the potential risk, um, 
it's, it's quite acceptable for them to want to try and return mm. to some normality. However, you've got to sort of calibrate that uh, sensibility that, you know, you're protecting yourself against all sorts of general crimes that any of us could potentially be faced with, but also considerations that you put your trust in the venue that you're speaking at or you're going to be performing at to say you need to put proper security in place. It would say to me, and again, this is speculation, that the venue did not get anybody with any kind of expertise to review that event, even to go on social media and say, is there any kind of threat that potentially could impact on this, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and on our guests? Uh, because ultimately, you've also got to consider those people that were sitting in the audience. They will be traumatized by what they saw as well. Yeah, so it's not just Salman Rushdie being the victim in this incident. And, yeah. I mean